Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about this show that just happened last night and honestly, it feels weird, but I'm going to be talking in defense of the Game Awards because not only did I think it was an incredible show last night, I think that a lot of people don't understand what the Game Awards is and on top of that, I find a lot of the complaints out there, I'm not going to call out any one person in particular, any content creator in particular today during this video, but I do find a lot of the criticism around this Game Awards to be incredibly misunderstanding and misinformed and even misplaced. In fact, I have such a long list of things that was announced at the Game Awards that when people act like there was nothing at the Game Awards, I think people are insane. Now, before we get into the rest of this, we are on our drive to get to 80,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so I would appreciate if you would drop a sub. I want to do something special if we happen to hit that goal. Also, we are giving away right now three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus. To win one of those three copies, all you need to do is head down into the description or the pinned comment, click on that viral sweep link, and I wish all of you guys luck with that. We announced the winner that's uh, later in January towards the release of the game. All right, that being said, let's get right into this because I have a bunch of notes. Just some quick talking points, but we're going to go through a list of games, and I'll throw little clips of the trailers up uh, when it's time. But I really want to talk about some of this stuff, because first off, we're a Nintendo channel, so we, let's focus on the Nintendo aspect. For a lot of Nintendo fans, they were obviously disappointed. Nintendo, quote-unquote, no-showed at the Game Awards. Technically, they didn't. Doug Bowser was there. Doug Bowser was on stage. Metroid. Uh, Dread won Best Action Game, uh, action platformer, or what is it? Action something. It, it, won, it won an award. It won, it won the award for the category it was in. It didn't win Game of the Year. It Takes Two did. But um, yeah, Metroid Dread won an award. Cool. Oh, ba best action adventure game. That's what it was. So it won best action adventure game. So here's the thing that was incredible. To see Metroid Dread get that award was amazing. It basically was up for two major awards, Game of the Year and this one. If it couldn't win Game of the Year, winning this one is really the best thing it could do. I jumped out of my seat. I didn't actually think it was going to win this award. So I was really, really, really happy for Metroid Dread. Uh, so yeah, Nintendo was there. Now, Nintendo didn't show any games. They did have a couple commercials. They had an Indie World commercial and then a general 2022 commercial. But Nintendo themselves really wasn't there showing any game in particular. No brand new looks, brand new trailers, brand new gameplay or any of that. Even for things like Bayonetta 3, which originally unveiled at the Game Awards. So yeah, Nintendo did do this whole no-show act. But Nintendo also already has so much announced for 2022, they might not have really needed to hype anything up uh, here. And Nintendo likely has an early direct. Now, people took this to mean Nintendo doesn't care about the Game Awards. I think that's silly. If they didn't care about the Game Awards, why the hell would Doug Bowser be there in person? They could have sent someone from Nintendo Treehouse or anybody else there to accept Metroid Dread's award. But it was literally the president of Nintendo. So yeah. Nintendo cares about the Game Awards. They didn't take advantage of the audience and the platform, but you know, that's okay. I think a lot of Nintendo's biggest games next year, um, at least ones that would fit with the crowd at the Game Awards, which would be things like Breath of the Wild 2, might not be coming to the second half of next year. So showing it now, I don't know. It might not feel great and who knows, Breath of the Wild, you know, Zelda games have a history of getting delayed. Now, some of you guys are going to go, but Nate, you told us, no, 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 no. I never said Breath of the Wild 2 will be at the Game Awards. There was obviously a rumor from Samus Hunter, which we will no longer be covering Samus Hunter for the time being um, until she gets a number of major things right at this point. Obviously, I feel like she took her own personal opinion and stated it as a fact, as a leak, and she did apologize for it, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, that was a big swing and miss there for Zelda 35th anniversary stuff. So yeah, screw that. We didn't get a medley. We didn't get anything Zelda related. We did get a Zelda re uh, looking kind of game, but uh, it wasn't Zelda. So, all right. Setting that aside, obviously, Nintendo fans are a little disappointed. But here's the thing. I always question, why? Why are we upset? Because Nintendo didn't show anything? I'm a Switch owner. I don't just play Nintendo games. Is that all you guys do? Is my audience just built around people who only play Nintendo games? Because the Switch had a number of games shown and announced for it. Let me go over the list. I have it right here. So, games that are shown that are coming to Switch. So, we had Monster Hunter Sunbreak. We had a new trailer for that. Hey, 
What's wrong with a new trailer for Monster Hunter Sunbreak? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, after the show, this is kind of an addendum to that news, they announced three new Amiibo. Look at them. I mean, they look pretty good, right? Um, we had a brand new game announced coming to Switch in Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. And all I saw when this was announced as coming to Switch was, oh, we still don't have a real Persona. Why are we looking at Gift Horse in the Mouse? Is this a good game? Why are we... Com I... I I'm confused. We got an announcement for Cuphead DLC, and guess what? Cuphead's on Switch, so we're getting that DLC, and it looked incredible, right? Sonic Frontiers. Are you kidding me? Did that not look incredible? Did that not look like the exact sort of trailer we wanted to see to unveil Sonic Frontiers? If you're not hyped after watching that trailer, even if, you know, we should be cautiously hop optimistic and hype responsibly, reality is that trailer was in. Incredible. So I don't understand. Okay, there's nothing shown for Switch. I, I'm, I'm confused here. Lord of the Rings Gollum. We got another look at that. We haven't seen that game in over a year. That game's coming to Switch. Looked pretty good from what we saw. It's looked good every time it's been shown. And then we obviously got a Plague Tale Requiem, which, yes, it's likely going to be a cloud version for Switch. They didn't state there at the show that it was going to be a cloud version, but the prior a Plague Tale game is also on Switch, but it's also a cloud version. So I see that. I understand that. I understand the criticism around that. Obviously, we'd rather have the game locally on Switch, but whatever. That's a nice handful of games coming to Switch. Now, here's the thing. I think a lot of people's opinions around the Game Awards are because people don't understand what the Game Awards are. Yes, it's an award ceremony, and yes, there's still going to be the criticisms that, you know, a handful of awards get rushed through every single year, don't get the proper stage time. Um, some people are actually upset thinking that, uh, you know, Joseph Ferraz was, like, rushed off stage after winning Game of the Year, when really he made that decision himself. Joseph Ferris could have made a 30-minute speech. Jeff Keighley was going to let it go. He's the one that decided he wanted to make this an incredibly quick thing because it was a long night. A couple things I want to talk about here. One, Jeff Keighley. I have seen a number of people claim that Jeff Keighley doesn't care about games. That this show is nothing but to puff Jeff Keighley's ego. That he cares so much about the, his ads and his whatever. I don't know Jeff Keighley. But we just had someone on the podcast who does know Jeff Keighley. So I'm going to let him do the talking for me. I have so many thoughts on this, and I don't think that they're the most popular thoughts for a lot of people, but it comes with a lot of actual knowledge uh, of, of the industry and how this stuff works yeah. and the, the realities of the back end. And aren't you guys uh, on the panel, I think, for the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and yeah, we have been one of many people that vote for yeah, this. And like, I, I can say, like, Jeff cares, man. Jeff Keeley fucking cares about this stuff. He mm -hmm. listens to the feedback. He knows what people are saying. And there's just a reality to it all of... I, I know that it's easy for us to look at it and be like, oh, it's an award show, but like you're focusing more on upcoming trailers and stuff than you are the actual awards. If they focus on the awards, nobody would watch it. And that's yeah. just the fact. Like, that's there's right. no... Yep. No getting around that. And the reality is, like, we look at other game award shows, other ones like the BAFTAs or DICE, and people, it does not game get the views. Like, do, yeah, do, exactly. Like, the award shows exist where the focus is awards. And the mainstream doesn't care. Not even the mainstream. The hardcores don't care. People do not watch it. Take award shows and apply it to the, the Oscars, the Grammys, the all that stuff. It's the same thing. The, the ratings are going down, down, down because it's just such a weird niche thing. And like we can talk and we can, you know, be on our high horses and be like, we want to see the awards. This is an award show. The reality is numbers speak, blah, blah, blah. We're yeah. here for the announcements. We're also here for the speeches and the awards. And they, I really think, are doing their best job of trying to make it as entertaining as possible while also rewarding the people for other stuff. There is one side of this that does not get talked about enough. And it's that the awards actually fucking matter. Being on stage, being able to like have the winner, having this moment, all that stuff is very nice and can be extremely, extremely important. I know this from experience. Greg Miller won Trending Gamer of the Year yeah, in 2015. He gave a really great speech, dude. He gave a speech and he fucking used that platform and he killed it. And I'm so proud of him. And to this day, people talk about that. Oh, yeah. Not every speech is that. You know, and, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be. But the reality is game awards matter. I saw a whole like I, anytime we talk about game awards, there'll be comments on YouTube and Twitter and everything and being like, none of this matters anyway. Like it's all a bunch of bullshit, whatever. It is not bullshit, man. If you go to a developer, if you go to a publisher, their lobbies of their offices are 
covered with these awards. They mean something to them. This allows them to get more funding for their next project. These awards allow them to put things on uh, Game of the Year versions of their games to sell more, to reignite an interest. Game awards are so, so important to these developers. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Now, assuming that all of that is true, and I have no reason to doubt it, Jeff Keighley clearly cares about video games. So, what are the main criticisms I've seen of the show? There was nothing exciting shown. What is... Well, I, okay. Let's go over the list that isn't from Nintendo. That, that's going to be for other platforms. PC, PlayStation, Xbox, right? We had Evil West. Metal Hellsinger. Gods of Metal. Steel Rising, Vampire, The Masquerade, GTFO, which also shadow dropped during the awards, Homeworld 3, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, King of Fighters 15, Planet of Lana, Somerville, Have a Nice Death, Thirsty Suitors, Tichia, Babylon's Fall, Rumbleverse, Tunic and oh my gosh, the tunic looked absolutely incredible. Destiny 2, the Witch King or Witch Queen expansion. Warhammer Space Marine 2. Dying Light 2. Final Fantasy 7 Remake Integrate coming to PC. Crossfire X. Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Nightingale. A new Saints Row game. Among Us going to VR. Slitterhead, which some people got a little upset about because the person behind it, they, they brought up Silent Hill. The point was bringing up why people should care about this game because it has the creator of Silent Hill. It wasn't trying to advertise it as a Silent Hill game. Misconception of the fans there. Dune Space Wars. The Expanse, a Telltale series. Star Trek Resurgence. Horizon Forbidden West, a big showing for Sony. Forspoken, another big showing for Sony. Ark Raiders. Hellblade 2, Send You a Sacrifice, the big showing for Xbox at this show. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Elden Ring. Wonder Woman, a new Wonder Woman game. Alan Wake 2, confirmed. Star Wars Eclipse. And then Matrix Awakens and Unreal 5 Experience, which, yes, folks, obviously isn't really like a game. It's more so a tech demo for Unreal Engine 5, but it is available for free for everyone on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and does look pretty incredible. So that's a massive list of games. Just glancing at it, it looked like 35 to 40 games talked about at the Game Awards in a span of three hours. Really three and a half hours because we all know the pre-show is really the real kickoff. So it was about a three and a half hour show. And yeah, 40 plus games shown off in addition to all the awards. And yeah, musical performances. I thought the orchestrated performance of the games leading into the game of the year, I've seen people be critical of that. Like, why do we have an orchestrated performance, you know, leading into the game of the year? And it's like, are you? Are you kidding me right now? Are you actually kidding me right now? This is the, probably the kind of talk we should have after every Nintendo Direct. Probably the kind of talk we should have after every PlayStation Showcase and everything else in between. Not getting the game or games you wanted does not a bad show make. This show had something Everybody, the only people you could argue it did not have anything for was if the only thing you care about are Nintendo first party games. You could argue for them, the only moment was Metroid Drive winning an award. But even then, we still had that. I am incredibly frustrated with the negative reactions around this show. Guys, I'm a Nintendo guy. I should be as pissed off as any of you that Nintendo no-showed. I should be pissed off that there wasn't, you know, 35 Switch games shown off. The problem is, I have an appreciation for gaming, even if they're games I'm not going to play. I have an appreciation for the games that win these awards. It takes two. You can cry foul on it winning Game of the Year, it winning best family game as well, you know, instead of all of Nintendo's offerings. But I ask you, have you played the game? Have you actually played It Takes Two? If you haven't and you're being critical, 
What's wrong with you? You can't be critical of a game winning you've never played because you don't know how great that game is. And in the case of It Takes Two, it's phenomenal. It's literally top three, if not obviously one game of the year, best game that released in the last year. It Takes Two is an emotional roller coaster. It Takes Two is an incredible gameplay experience, an incredible narrative, an incredible visual, incredible audio. I, I, I venture that It Takes Two for what it is, is near perfect. Near perfect. I can't think of even one criticism I have of that game after completing it. Folks, the Game Awards is a show for everybody. And the problem with it being a show for everybody, which includes game developers, media, and fans, is that no one is really ever going to feel 100% satisfied. Right? Right? No one is. If you're a Sony fan, oh, they only had two things I cared about. If you're in a Microsoft fan, oh, they only had two things I cared about. PC fan, oh, they only had a couple things I cared about. Oh, man, who cares about the awards? This is an award show that doesn't care about the awards, which is bullshit. They clearly care about the awards. Jeff Keighley just knows the big audience coming in isn't there for the awards. I want to be clear about this. The awards are not for you. Maybe that bothers you. These awards are for the developers, for the studios, for the publishers, not for you. That's why the reason you're tuning in isn't the awards. You're tuning in because, hey, you want to see some game announcements. That's what you're tuning in for. And if what you want to see announced, if what you want to see isn't there, you're going to think it's a shit show. That's so incredibly unfair to the 40 games shown yesterday. Now you want to say, oh, there's too many cinematic trailers. Too many. Jeff Keighley's not at fault of that. The Game Awards ain't at fault of that. Be mad at the game publishers. That has nothing to do with the show itself. The show is not at fault that the trailers shown by others were not chosen to be full gameplay trailers. That some were just quick little teases. That's not their fault. That's the fault of the publishers not giving more. The music performances. Oh, I got a problem with old man Sting being on stage. He was singing a song from a TV show based on video games. That TV show is actually, a, it's, a, it's a video game adapted into a TV show. Yeah, that's related. It's not jumping through hoops to justify Sting being there. No. It's literally a video game that became a TV show, and this is like the theme song of that show. That is literally related. That song does not exist without a video game existing. That's not jumping through hoops. That's not hyperbole. It's gaming related. Imagine Dragons. Some people didn't like their performance. And yet, the song they did is also in a couple of video games. So is your bitching, you don't like that song? I guarantee you, if you didn't like it, there's millions of others that did. Same with the orchestrated performance. You're not into the orchestra, millions of others are. Not everything has to be tailored to you. We're all selfish as people. We all want what we want, right? Some people think E3 was significantly better because we had Metroid Dread and Breath of the Wild 2 as Nintendo fans. But if you think about that, that was what? Five minutes out of a four plus day event from E3? Those five minutes was better than the entirety of the Game Awards of 40 games? There were more games that you want to talk about wasting your time. Oh, it's too long. We had 12 hour days at E3. Official stream start, official stream end. There wasn't a single day 40 games were shown off. The show's not perfect. Let's address the marketing. People bitch about the marketing. How do you think the bills get paid? I appreciate how the marketing was handled. Oh, you know, advertisements for mobile games. There was actually only two ads in the entire show for mobile games. Two. Two. And they lasted less than 45 seconds each. Most of the sponsors, most of the sponsors were literally managed in less than one minute mentions. Do we want to go back to Verizon 5G? How E3 was paying bills, Verizon 5G, 45 minutes? Do we want to go to a time 
where a show like this is so reliant on the ad partners that they have to have the Mountain Dew backstage area. That they have to have the Doritos Player of the Week. Do we want to go back to when an hour of the show was dedicated to ads? And you might go, but an hour of the show was dedicated to ads. You're wrong. I went through and rewatched the entire show today, stopped and started a timer every single time an ad was shown. And I'm not talking about the little baked in commercial segments that were just, you know, trailers that advertise games. I'm talking about when it was very specifically a sponsor of the show. It only took up 16 minutes and 12 seconds out of a three and a half hour show. 16 minutes and 12 seconds is what you're bitching about out of a three and a half hour show. Then I hear the argument, oh, the Game Awards, it's nothing but an advertisement. Yeah. What's a game trailer? It's an ad for a game. Why do we get excited about Nintendo Directs? What are Nintendo Directs? Advertising for games coming to Switch. So what you're bitching about isn't that the show's just a big marketing thing. What you're bitching about is that they didn't market the games you wanted them to. That the studios that you wanted to be there didn't bring the goods. And then, is that the Game Awards fault? Is it Jeff Keighley's fault that Nintendo didn't bring something incredible to this show? That they didn't show off Breath of the Wild 2, or Metroid Prime 4, or Bayonetta 3 even that's coming next year, or even something for Splatoon 3, right? Is it the Game Awards fault that Nintendo chose to not put something in this show. No. That's Nintendo. Be mad at Nintendo for not coming. Not the Game Awards. You think Jeff Keighley was telling Nintendo not to be there? Telling Nintendo not to have something for the show? Are you, you think there wasn't conversations? Of course Jeff Keighley wanted Nintendo stuff at the show. But he doesn't control what companies participate and what companies bring the goods. The Game Awards to me was absolutely incredible. It was the best gaming event of the year. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Blew E3 out of the water. Had significantly more announcements and more hype than Summer Game Fest. And yeah, we could talk about Nintendo Directs and State of Plays and everything in between. And maybe those individual events were more hype for you. Because it had things that you care about. And if all you truly care about watching the Game Awards last night was, say, in our case, Nintendo games, then why were you watching the Game Awards? That's not an event for you. Wait for the next Nintendo Direct. If all you care about are Sony games, why the hell were you watching the Game Awards? Go watch State of Plays. Bottom line is, we already have events dedicated to single platforms all year long. The Game Awards ain't that event. The Game Awards is about the whole of gaming. And what you discover in a lot of these reactions is how many content creators and gaming fans just don't give a shit about anything but their own selfish desires. When Eric and I react to these shows every year, we see the same thing. Whether it's Game Awards, E3, Summer Game Fest, we see the same thing. People bitching. People complaining that they didn't get what they wanted, showing no appreciation for the other people that did get what they wanted. Events like this are hard to run. Just running my E3 show on my own was difficult. I can't imagine the stress that Jeff Keighley's under running the Game Awards, the pressure he's under, the negativity and backlash he faces every single year after a show, knowing the amount of work and passion and time and just effort he puts into that show to have to deal with the negativity of not being able to satisfy all gamers because inherently gamers are selfish. Let's not pretend that that's not true. You know you're selfish. I'm selfish, we're all selfish. We, we want what we want and we, if we don't get it, we get mad. And I think that's just a dumb way to look at this. Every game that was showed yesterday, I thought was incredible. The only really weird eyeball one was that Doki dance thing going on, which actually looks like it might be an interesting game, but I'm not really into the whole K-pop scene, so 
you know, forgive me for maybe not being into that. That was maybe the only announcement. But even if I wasn't into that, you know who probably was? Everyone watching in China. Everyone watching in Japan. It might not have been for you, but gosh darn, were the Eastern fans probably hyped by that showing. Jeff Keighley has a whole world of gaming to take into consideration, not just you. And because of that, I think he does an incredible job. I thought everything showed well. Even when I was like, oh man, cinematic trailer. That's not his fault, that's the industry's fault. That's the studio's fault. Every game shown looked incredible. From the indies all the way to the tippy top of the first parties. Everything looked wonderful. Even the sparing movie trailers, which there was actually less of them than I expected, right? We got, we got a Matrix movie trailer. We got a trailer for the Sonic movie too, and that was basically it. I mean, they showed a trailer for the Halo TV series as well, but that wasn't a movie. I actually thought we were gonna get more. I thought like The Last of Us was gonna have another trailer there, right? Like I thought there was gonna be more of that, and there was actually less than I expected. And I always wonder, what do people really expect going into these shows? Jeff Keighley told us about musical performances. Oh, let me bitch about the. He told you it was gonna be there. If you didn't like the musical performance, why were you watching? He told you they were gonna be there. He announced Sting in Imagine Dragons ahead of time, the orchestra ahead of time. He told you what this show was. And again, while I get upset that the awards maybe aren't treated a little bit better, the awards aren't for us. We don't win awards. The developers win them. And you think Joseph Harris is pissed off that he won Game of the Year and was only on stage for five seconds? Do you think he cares? That guy is busy cussing his way to the airport, throwing that thing in the air, probably getting ready to make lots of viral videos with Hazelight Studios over winning Game of the Year. You think Nintendo cares that, oh my gosh, we only won one of the awards we were nominated for? No, because it was Metroid Dread, a game that when they announced it, they probably had no idea if it was going to be a big success. And here we stand today, and it's likely the best-selling Metroid game of all time, and it got recognized as the best action-adventure game. The same sort of category Zelda goes up for. Metroid just won it with a 2D side-scroller. Let that sink in. You think these game studios are upset? They're proud. They walk with pride winning these awards. They walk with pride being nominated. These nominations get people jobs. The awards aren't for us, and Jeff Keighley knows that. That's why he focuses so much on having 40 games at the event. Because he knows that's why we're watching. He's trying to cater to the entire industry. This is an all-encompassing industry event, the only one like it in the world. And it starts that we appreciate it. So I want to end this video by saying thank you, Jeff Keighley. I think not enough people give you praise for how hard of a show this was and how incredible it really is. This was the celebration of gaming's past, present, and future that I needed and wanted. Sure, say it's selfish because I got what I wanted. Really? Most of the games shown, I'm not going to play. But I can appreciate how great they looked and appreciate the millions of others that are going to enjoy them. Because I don't need the Game Awards to be the perfect show for me. The perfect show for me is a direct. What I want the Game Awards to be is something that properly recognizes the entire encompassing sphere of gaming. And it did that. There was something, even if it was small, for everyone. Even if for Nintendo you only cared about Metroid Dread, you had something then, didn't you? I am Nathaniel Ruffeljance from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.